Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Amber Valley series. There are 35 parishes in this beautiful slice of eastern Derbyshire. Here's one for your viewing pleasure. Welcome back to Amber Valley again, everybody, where the rain has stopped, but it's still very cold. So the hood's still up, the coat's still on, and the gloves are still on as well. We've got another route that will probably take me another hour and a half to walk around. It's another big place here in this district of Derbyshire. We're beginning outside this lovely building here. Look at this. So it's an old primitive Methodist chapel, which is now a preschool. And if you can read the sign from here, you can see that's Swanwick Preschool. And that's because we're in the parish of Swanwick. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Swanwick, Herdsman's Dairy Farm. Here we go again in Amber Valley, and this week I'm going to take you around a place that's famous primarily for two things. First of all, during World War II, there was a building here which failed to hold one of the most notorious German prisoners of war, a man whose escape would lead to a film being made about him in 1957. Secondly, this part of Derbyshire will be known to chocolate lovers, thanks to a factory that sits on top of an old colliery site. Put those two facts together, throw in a dash of industrial heritage, four schools, four pubs, a church, a crematorium, and a lot of housing, and you have Swanwick. The whole shebang is located to the south and east of the A38, which curves around the edge of the village before heading towards Derby in one direction and the M1 in the other. Once again, coal mining played a massive role in the development of this one. Swanwick had a major colliery, which closed in the 1960s, but it has much more history than that. Several families figure in its past, most notably the Turners, the Woods and the Wrights, two of whom will meet on this route. It's a big place, but it has a relatively small village centre, owing to the masses of 20th century commuter housing to its north and east. So strap in, it's time to see what makes Swanwick tick. We begin with the Hayes Conference Centre, a massive house with several smaller buildings that surround it. This was built in the 1850s for Mr Fitzherbert Wright and was originally named Swanwick Hayes. However, it didn't function as a house for very long. In 1910, it was converted into a conference centre and operates as such to this day. The centre, which has had many additions to it since it opened, provides sleeping accommodation for up to 400 people in 274 rooms, 11 of which are for disabled persons. There are also two main dining rooms with full-time catering staff. No fewer than 30 of the rooms are designed to hold meetings. Other facilities here include a bar, five-a-side football pitches, a games room and even a chapel. The only other use the Hayes Conference Centre has ever had came during World War II, when it was a prisoner of war camp for both Germans and Italians. This fact was to make the place famous. It was the second camp to fail to hold Luftwaffe officer Franz von Vera, a German escapee who's often known as the one that got away. He was recaptured at nearby RAF Hucknall whilst trying to steal an aircraft. 
Von Vera's escape tunnel can still be seen at the conference center today. A film was made about him in 1957, and it was actually called The One That Got Away. It starred Hardy Kruger. We start our main walk on Pentridge Road outside the old Primitive Methodist Chapel we saw at the beginning. It was built in 1880, and as we already know, it's now a preschool. Let's head to the east and get walking around. Swanwick has four pubs, and we'll be catching all of them as we do. Up first is the Boot and Slipper on the corner of the Green. This gets its name thanks to Swanwick's association with the manufacture of footwear. This industry had died out by the turn of the 20th century, and the Boot and Slipper is the only modern day reminder that it even existed. The green itself isn't really a green, well, not in the traditional sense anyway. It's a nice little spot with a couple of benches and painted planters though. At number 22 the green is the old schoolhouse. This is a communal building, often used by local organisations such as a mother and toddler group that meet every Monday. Speaking of community, over the road is the Salt Pot Cafe, regarded by many a Swanwick local as a valuable place of friendship, hospitality and support for many in the village. It all sounds typical of Derbyshire really, doesn't it? A left turn now and we're on Derby Road. This is where most of Swanwick's main amenities are. These include a dentist, a convenience store, a Methodist chapel and a butcher shop which we'll get a closer look at shortly. This was Swanwick's original main street upon which the village grew. The road links Alfreton to Ripley as it always has, but these days the A38 handles a lot of the traffic which would otherwise have come through Swanwick years ago. Here's that butcher shop, Matkins, which has been a local family-run institution for more than 40 years. Next we have pub number two. This is the Steam Packet Inn. Now this is a building that looks a lot different to how it did years ago. The pub was originally within a terraced row, but the cottages on one side of it have been removed and replaced with the modern car park. Standing directly opposite this pub is the church. This is dedicated to St Andrew and it's not all that old. It was completed in 1859 and its construction was aided by a generous donation from the wealthy industrialist Francis Wright. The tower was added in 1903 as a gift from Fitzherbert Wright, who was retiring as the managing director of the Butterley Company. In its grounds we have the War Memorial. This is for World War I only, and it's a simple cross located close to the main door. St Andrew's Church celebrated its 150th anniversary in September 2010, a feat marked by a celebratory service conducted by the Bishop of Derby. The anniversary was also marked by the publication of a book called Swanwick 1304-2010, The Story of Our Village. It sold over 600 copies. Next to the church is Swanwick Hall, which was once occupied by the Wood family. They were substantial landowners in the village. Derbyshire County Council bought the building after the death of Hugo Wood in 1920, and two years later it became a grammar school. Before moving to the hall, the Woods occupied an early 17th century building in what's known as Woods Yard, elsewhere on Derby Road. Right outside this you'll find a bus stop. You can get several services here which go to Derby, Mansfield, Chesterfield and Alfreton. After turning around we've reconvened with the Green, and this little garden was next on the list to encounter. On the corner of Broadway you'll find a well. This is not as ancient as it looks. It was built in 2002 to celebrate the Queen's Golden Jubilee, and every year in true Derbyshire fashion a well dressing ceremony takes place at it. There were several wells scattered around Swanwick, but by far the largest used to stand on Hayes Lane. It was truly a massive Victorian affair with a large seat. Unfortunately, in the 1970s, it was removed to make room for housing. Now for a long walk downhill towards the eastern end of the village. In doing so, we pass by the front of Swanwick Hall School, but we also encounter another. That there is the Swanwick School and Sports College. It's a special school for 5 to 16 year olds who are on the autism spectrum. The road becomes the Delves, and before you know it, you're at pub number three, the Gate. This one is an attractive mock Tudor style building. 
Much like the hanging gate which we encountered back in Hazelwood, there's an actual physical gate outside the pub. The Delves gets its name thanks to coal mining, but we're not talking deep seam here. Instead, the word Delves, which literally means diggings, refers to small surface pits that would have once been scattered across the local area. The Gate pub stands at the site of the entrance to the Delves pit, hence the name. Deep mining came much later, and we'll get to that in a short while. For now, this is Broadway, and here come the houses, lots of them. Swanwick's eastern side is dominated by a raft of 20th century housing estates. Much like Kilburn, Swanwick is one of the target locations for the Derbyshire commuter, given transport links here are so easily accessible. Running between the maze of suburban closes and cul-de-sacs, there are plenty of little linkways. One of them leads to Craze Hill Recreation Ground, where Swanwick Hall Cricket Club play their home games. They were founded in 1973 by a group of cricket-loving teachers. They played in the Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire Border League until 1981, when the name was changed to the Derbyshire County League instead. To exit Cray's Hill, we need to follow this track, and track is an apt term. This was once a railway line which ran to and served Swanwick Colliery. It was a branch of the Midland Railway's Pie Bridge to Ambergate route, which ran across Butley Reservoir. The old track bed brings us to Sleepmoor Wood, through which the line once continued towards the colliery. Here there's a little information board which shows you the route and the site of Swanwick Colliery. Although relatively small, it was a major local mine, and it lasted until the 1960s. Sleepmoor Lane's name is a reference to the area it passes through. It might all be houses along here nowadays, but in times past this was open moorland, named Slight or Slate Moor. Sleepmoor Windmill, a post mill built in 1790, once stood to the north of this road. North of the road these days is a sports ground. This is one of two such areas in Swanwick which play host to a local football club, the other being near a school off Pentridge Road. In this case, the club in question is Sleepmoor United, members of the Midlands Regional Alliance. That little board we've just seen delves, pun intended, into a lot more history about Sleepmoor, including some information about an old pub that once stood upon it. We've got to move on though, and now we're in another housing estate. Just like the eastern extremities of Swanwick, the north is also full of 20th century commuter housing. Interestingly, although Swanwick Colliery was a major local employer, the village never really developed around it. Swanwick Colliery Company was formed in 1736, but at that time the village was renowned for other industries instead. As well as the manufacture of footwear, Swanwick had lots of cottage industries like framework knitting, which continued here later than any other village in Derbyshire. Perhaps its most famous industry was the production of silk stockings. It was here in Swanwick where such garments were made for the royal family during the time of Queen Victoria. Nowadays, none of that exists. Swanwick is a commuter village and all of its industry is consigned to the history books. At least it still has some nice nature areas, like Lark Hill Woodlands for example. I'll say one thing, I mean, normally housing estates like this are a little bit on the boring side, aren't they? Because there aren't really any landmarks to sort of get our teeth into. It's just all housing and obviously this estate, you can tell, it's been built fairly recently within the last couple of decades because you can, well, you can just tell by the style of housing, can't you? The, these aren't 1800s, they're definitely 20th century. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but the, I will say one thing about estates like this, they're very, very quiet and it means that you can just walk around and do whatever you want, basically. Um, no one's really going to come to you and say anything because you know people people who live in these estates tend to tend to work away they tend to work in the cities like your derbies and your nottinghams and your sheffields and your things like that so yeah they can be quite peaceful places and that nature reserve we've just seen lark hill meadows is just a quiet spot in the middle of an already quiet area there you go now we're nearly done with this walk uh, i'm going to turn left here and this will take us down towards another sort of sportsy play area type type thing and that'll take us back to the main road there's a few more landmarks to catch there and then we're heading back to the car 
This is Swanwick Park, but it also goes by a different name, the Swanwick Welfare Recreation Ground. It offers two football pitches with changing facilities which are available to rent. In addition, there are various areas of play equipment, including a basketball court, swings, slide and a climbing frame, and it's all located in front of the Swanwick Centenary Centre. That's this building on your screens now. That's where the local scout group are based. On the other side of the park, you'll find yourself in a maze of narrow streets with a one-way system. In these parts, this is the most striking feature. Before you is Swanwick Baptist Chapel, originally built in 1796 as a meeting house. It was later enlarged. Adjoining the chapel is a schoolroom built in 1912 in memory of Charles Stovall, as this stone affirms. After walking down Chapel Street, you're then on Derby Road again. We're going to briefly head north before turning back south again shortly to wrap up this route. Going this way towards Alfreton, you pass a charity shop and a petrol station, but primarily we're looking for pub number four. This is the Cross Keys, and of all the pubs in Swanwick, seemingly it's this one which has the least in terms of recorded history. All I could find was a record of an auction in 1896, when the pub was sold for £3,100 to Ophila's Brewery Company in Derby. Aside from that, it appears not much is known. Now we're heading back south, and on the left here we're passing the pantry, a deli and a tea room which used to be a florist called Rachel's Bouquet. After that, you're in familiar territory. Here's the village centre again, looking towards the crossroads and the church. Although Swanwick isn't short of a place or two to leave your car, there is a free car park here, which is handy. On the wall of said car park, I located a parish notice board. That's Swanwick in the books, folks, and Amber Valley is down to eight. We're tearing through them. Where Derby Road meets the High Street is an attractive little green, with some nice flowers, some local artwork and a memorial bench. To finish with, we're walking down the High Street itself, taking in Seal's Fodder on the way. That's an animal feed shop, stocking everything from dog food to chicken feed. OK, so the rest of the street is very much residential. It'll look very familiar to you in a moment. If I turn the camera around and show you what I can see. You can see the boot and slipper on the end of the road there at the roundabout. That's close to where we began. And that's really the circuit of Swanwick. Now, of course, there are other things in this place too. If you were to go right at that roundabout, you'd be heading towards another primary school. There's another football uh, club down there as well. But that's, that's just a dead end. Not really much point me uh, heading down there and showing you that. It's a school and a sports club. We see plenty of those all over the place. Now, what became of the old colliery? Well, I can answer that question for you because tonight I'm staying here in Swanwick and I'm staying in a hotel that's built on the old site. That's not all that's there though. Okay, so tonight I'm staying in this travel lodge here at Swanwick Services. There it is. Just a, a normal standard travel lodge, I suppose you could call it. I've been in it before. I've, I think I've stayed in it three times now. So uh, I'm used to it. So I know exactly what's in there. There's a Burger King in there. Uh, there's a, another sort of shopping type area. And then if you go the other side, there's a, a petrol station and an industrial estate. Now, what's on that industrial estate is actually very, very interesting, especially if you like chocolate. Let's go for a little walk around here and I'll show you what I mean. When the Swanwick Colliery Company was formed in 1736, it was done so close to the site of the services which stand on the edge of this modern industrial estate. This is the old colliery site, and among its many buildings these days is the local fire station, seen here. As well as the services, there are several small businesses, based mainly in these units at the end of Tayside Close. The approach road to all of this, which is bumpy and a clear sign of mining subsidence, bears the name Old Swanwick Colliery Road to remind people of the village's mining heritage. One business stands head and shoulders over the rest on the old colliery site, Thornton's, which is owned by Italian chocolate maker Ferrero. Thornton's originated in Sheffield in 1911, when Joseph William Thornton opened his first shop, known as the Chocolate Cabin. 
He died in 1919, but the business still steadily grew. Via the old Castle Blouse factory in Belper, they ended up here in 1984 after having purchased some of the old colliery land. This site was opened by the Queen a year later. Ferrero took over in 2015. Well, as far as the chocolate factory goes, that's about as close as I can get because there's lots of security here and I can't really go through the gate and film the factory from like just the inside because I'm sure there'll be someone here to pounce on me. So you get the idea anyway. There's now a Thornton's factory built on the site of the old Swanwick Colliery. Now from here, from this public footpath, you can also see something else. You might be able to anyway. I can see, I don't know whether it's too far away for you, but in the distance there, there's a fountain which is protruding high up into the sky. That's actually at a crematorium which is right next to these services and that is going to form today's special section. The Amber Valley Memorial Park and Crematorium, located just off the B6179, was opened in 2015. It offers not just cremations, but also traditional burials and natural burials as well. Its location between Swanwick and Alfreton was cleverly designed to blend in with the local landscape around it, so you probably wouldn't know it was even there if there weren't any road signs. I thought the best way to actually show you the place was by including a short video, which can be found on its very own website. I'm at Memoria Amber Valley in the beautiful Derbyshire Hills. You will notice there is ample car parking and we even have an overflow car park for large services and there are outside conveniences for mourners to use before the service. One of the other important aspects of the service is that um, families feel very strongly about being rushed. They don't like being rushed. Now at Memoria, our service slots are an hour apart. So it's very rare that you will see the family before you or the family after you. The chapel here at Memoria Amber Valley is very spacious and very bright. It can comfortably seat well over a hundred mourners. We've now come through to the gardens at Memoria and they really are stunning, beautifully landscaped. At this point you might be thinking about a lasting memorial for your loved one. And here you have an amazing uh, amount of choices. You can have a private planted family garden, you can have a lakeside marker, perhaps a tree or a rose bush in their name, something simple like just a plaque on the obelisk or their ashes to be scattered in these beautiful gardens. Plenty of choices. Well, given what's left in Amber Valley now, this might be the last time that I stay in this travel lodge. I've used it now four times and every time I can't fault it. It's in a perfect location for lots of places, not just in Amber Valley, but also within Nottinghamshire as well. Uh, and with it being so close to the M1, it means that you know you can get on the motorway north or south very, very easily. Here's the view out of the window. This is probably the, the best view I've ever had in this travel lodge, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously you can't see much. It's just the car park and the, um, you know, the services and the fire station and everything like that. But uh, yeah, normally I'm on the floor below. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've been on the ground floor because there's a, there's a floor underneath this. There's a downstairs in this one. But there you go, that's the, the view from room four here at the uh, Travel Lodge Alfreton. And I'll just show you what the room's like because, you know, some of you may have never stayed in a Travel Lodge before. This is what you get for, I think it was £32 I paid for this room tonight. So that's pretty decent, isn't it? Nice big bed, telly, ensuite, mirror. <laughs> you know, it, what, what, do you, what can you expect from a budget hotel, basically? And there's little old me, showing you everything. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Right, so we're going to spend the night here and then we'll move on to the next one in Amber Valley. And bright and early the next morning, I was off to the next one, Swanwick's neighbour to the east. With just eight left to go, Amber Valley is looking increasingly like another district we can mark off this year. Join me next week where we'll be exploring what else came of the colliery land in these parts. See you soon, folks. for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it 
You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.